Hi there. This is a little podcast about me and my husband's thoughts about the Swedish school and the school plan. So um, he's just going to read out something that he uh, found on uh, which website was it, Paul? It's on Schoolwork. It is the Laro plan in English. All right. The government site for um, guidelines for the schools, which all schools have to follow. Okay, please read, please. Okay. The the, f the first section in the plan is fundamental values and tasks of the school. So this I'll read this. Fundamental values. The national school system is based on democratic foundations. The Education Act stipulates that education in the school system aims at pupils acquiring develop knowledge and values. It should promote the development and learning of all pupils and a lifelong desire to learn. It's not that controversial. Education should impart and establish respect for human rights and the fundamental democratic values on which Swedish society is based. Each and everyone working in the school should also encourage respect for the intrinsic value of each person and the environment we all share. Okay, This started on the democracy, democracy thing. Um, let me scroll down a bit. Okay, objectivity and open approaches. The school should be open to different ideas and encourage their expression but uh, that's only so long as you go to the school and do the, the entire government curriculum for 10 years. As long as you do it the right way, isn't it? What yeah, the majority have decided. Yeah. So if, if you're a minority and you don't agree with it, then tough shit. It should emphasise the importance of forming personal standpoints and provide opportunities for doing this. Teaching should be objective and encompass a range of different approaches. I don't know how teaching can be objective when the teachers are paid from tax money. So they're not going to be telling children that taxation is theft, are they? So that it's, it's impossible to be objective unless it's in a market environment. All parents should be able to send their children to school fully confident that their children will not be prejudiced in favour of any particular view. Now... I'm pretty sure they put <laughs> Swedish flags on the table at everyone's birthday party at uh, daycare. And the textbooks that I've looked in, they are extremely statist. The whole point of view is the state is good. Democracy is good. It's not two wolves and a lamb having arguing over what to have for dinner at all. It's the best way to do things. And... The government only does what's best for everyone. So it's fine that they take about 75% of your earnings. Yeah, more than that. Okay. Yeah, well, what I reacted to when I was uh, uh, reading this text before was the norms of uh, and values of the school. Because uh, all schools have to follow this. And uh, they're very clear in teaching what they think is right. It's, so if you have a different opinion, it, it that's does, not right. It does say at the start, for the compulsory school, the government determines the school's fundamental values and tasks. So if the government's deciding their, the school's values, obviously the values are going to be in line with having a government. And uh, then it says the overall goals and guidelines for education and the ordinances for the syllabuses. So the government decides what you should do, what you should think about stuff, how much of everything you should do, and um, how you should do it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, they want to treat people as... <laughs> at the same time, they want to treat people as individuals and ensure that there is no one particular prejudiced um, view in, enforced on, uh, on the yeah. children. Uh, the, the big difference with uh, this... Uh... Swedish uh, curriculum and most other curriculums in the world is that in Sweden you don't have a choice. All of the schools have to follow this curriculum and no uh, alternative education like homeschooling or unschooling or democratic schools are allowed. Uh, so while you uh, in a country like the US or England can say that you don't agree with these values because most schools have 
these kind of values in most Western countries. But there you have the option to opt out of it. In uh, Sweden, you don't even have that option. You're forced to do it. And we had a little chat when we went to Harida um, uh, Kommun and uh, chatted with um, the people that worked with the, the educational department. Do you remember that? We had a little chat about children's rights and why homeschooling was not allowed in Sweden and why we could Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the whole conversation, but <laughs> I, I remember asking them, will, will they take our kids if we don't send them to school? And um, they pretty quickly changed the subject and said, oh, no, why don't we just introduce each other first rather than just getting to the point? Yeah. Uh, which, uh, you know. But in the end, when we had a really long chat, uh, we found out that if we didn't send our kids to school, they would send us um, a fine for every month that's higher than your income because they can see what you're taxing. So uh, they'd send it for a higher amount and so, but, there would be was... the judge that would send it, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then if you re repeatedly didn't pay it, uh, social would uh, come and you're always under the, the threat that if you don't play it by the rules, they got the guns and they can take your kid because they've done that to uh, uh, Dominic Johansson. So that's what people are, are scared about in Sweden. You, um, uh, if you stay in Sweden, you have to, have to follow the rules. You don't really have a, a right uh, not to have your kids in this uh, kind of state schooling. You know, even allowed to have um, alternative schools, like proper Montessori schools that actually follow Montessori 100% and things like that. They're not allowed either. Um, anyway, what was interesting for me at that conversation was the lengths they went to to avoid answering a straight question. And the answer to the question, if I don't send my kids to school, will you take my kids, is yes. But they went all around the houses and we just literally had to go through every step of the process to nail it down what the actual facts were um so but i think that's you know that's what school basically teaches you um to avoid the uh the honest questions like where do the teachers wages come from and they come from pointing a gun at someone and saying give me your money but obviously teachers can't stand there in front of the class and and discuss that in an honest way um they could do it just doesn't really suit their agenda no it doesn't so um my my thoughts were a little bit about um that in um, in in sweden they say that it's the children's right to go to school but when um, when they don't want to go to school that's that's not allowed either they they just couldn't we couldn't talk to them and get them to say that, well, it's not a right then. It's, it is only an obligation. It's not a right to go to school in Sweden because you only have that choice. You don't have any choice to opt out. Um, and for me, I'm not really, I'm not really against uh, the idea of um, having a school that our kids can go to, but I think the school should have the values that we share and uh, a school should not be state funded. I think that's really unethical. I think if somebody is using a school, they should pay for it 100% so that you have your agenda on it. And in our case, it would be to uh, be a radical agenda. Yeah, very, very radical. <laughs> exactly. Um, so in, in, in our case, it would be to uh, uh, teach about the, the non-aggression principle rather than uh, democratic values. Because even though I, I like democracies to some parts, I don't like it 100%. Like in this case, where a, democ uh, a majority of people in Sweden have decided that the school should be only one way of schooling and that oh. you shouldn't have any options and that you should punish the people that doesn't follow it. This is the majority the bullying 
the minority. Right. Yeah, there's a difference between a, a, a democracy and a republic. And a democracy is just the 51% uh, can vote to murder 49% if they want to. Uh, but in a republic, there's basic rules which are pre-agreed and then all of the votes take part um, with the majority deciding, but within those rules. So this, I mean, this was the idea in America, um, but it sort of went uh, out of control, didn't well, it? Well, it went out of control. So yeah, that, yeah that was the idea that, that in an inalienable rights, um, but obviously the, <laughs> they they have the problem that the majority can vote to change the the ground rules. So maybe it slows it down a bit, but not very not very much. No. But in, in a in a in a proper republic where you have the the basic rules that you know no no theft no murder no no violence no um, fraud. Uh, well, <laughs> if you follow those rules, you can't have a you can't have a state. All you have is a uh, variety of companies that provide services like uh, security and um, well, other government mm. so-called services well the problem is that um, this um, uh, there's too few people that think that this would be a good idea because basically you're brainwashed into thinking that these things can't be run privately why do you think that is uh, 12 years of school or however many years of school it is yeah i think that's exactly. the, the main reason and also well in sweden so many people are employed by the government that um uh, well, the fact that those people get to vote is is just a complete conflict of interests. <laughs> exactly. You want to keep your jobs and you want to keep your wages. Yeah. It's like when you're uh, teaching something in the university or you're doing some research or something like that. When you finish your study, you finish your job. So you've got to keep on studying <laughs> and giving you new perspectives. Uh, that's why there's so many ridiculous uh, research things going on that's funded by tax money all the time about stupid stuff isn't it like so, so i don't know what you're talking about What's okay going? i was just uh, having in mind this study that was going on about uh males giving birth in sweden that was a few months ago that because uh, oh, right, the free market on. would never never fund a study like that exactly. i mean they might do for entertainment i mean if, if you look at the if somebody pay for it but i mean I don't think it's right to well, by definition some pay to pay, but everybody else's money. No, but <laughs> no. Is that all you had on your mind, or do you have something else you want to add about democratic democratic values and the Swedish school? And oh yeah, I was just going to say to you that uh, I had some thoughts about why, uh, what it could be why. Uh, alternative schools are uh, so unaccepted in Sweden. You can't you can't run an alternative school. You get shut down uh, if you don't have the the values and norms and the program that dictates in the Swedish Laro Plan curriculum. Um, and you can't do the homeschooling or unschooling, or world schooling, or any kind of different schooling outside of this. This plan. Is, so, um, mm. because a lot of people, I just want to say to you, lots of people think that uh, that are in the homeschooling um, community in Sweden. Uh, there's no homeschoolers in Sweden. They've all moved to different countries. But the people that would like to homeschool, they think it seems to think the majority. Well, I understand that uh, the laws will change. That you will, through democracy, be able to uh, make uh, homeschooling legal and I just think that they're pretty much they're, they're wasting the time. They're, they're just going to stay in Sweden and they're going to hope that this changes. But I don't think that it will change. And I wonder what you're thinking about this. Well, whether people will be able to vote to have homeschooling legal in Sweden. Yeah. I can't. Well, it's not going to happen. No, it's because just. Yeah. The, the, the people who are in the government. They are there because they love telling other people what to do and controlling everybody. That's their whole reason for being there. So they're not going to 
And well, oh, and they understand that the way to control people is to get to the children first. All all governments have done that throughout history is get the children, and then you know you control. Um, then your your position, if control is safe, so they're not going to give up that, or well, certainly not easily. Mm. And the reason, pretty much, why that it's like that is because most people are negative to it. They think that most people are negative to what. To, to homeschooling and alternative education. Most I, people in Sweden. Yeah, that I've talked oh. to, the absolute majority, they're really negative to it. They don't well, the, understand it. The thing it is, though, and... once, once you've put your kids in school, it's like every parent you meet and you say, oh, what's your kid's school like? They all say, oh, it's really good. Because you know, if, if they admit that it's rubbish or that you know government schools are rubbish, then they're in a bit of a situation, which means that they'd have to, or in Sweden, if people were honest, they'd have to, decide to leave the country once they actually admit that the mm -hmm. system is rubbish and they've put their kids in it for 10 years yeah so, I mean, I... yeah but it's not only that it could also be that um that they, I, i'm sure there are a lot of really good teachers and uh, there are loads of children that really love going to school in sweden I, but I, the thing I, is I that think... they don't know that they can't opt out well you say there's a lot of really good teachers but teaching has the lowest requirements and, and like um the lowest school grades and uh, college grades to, to get into it and those grades do correlate quite well with iq yeah. in other countries at least I don't know yeah statistically it will be a lot of teachers that so really, are not you, very good at the job but so really, there are the always new, people that love doing their job especially the new teachers you really have got a lot of thickos there to teach your children and not only thickos but statists so they fundamentally believe that it's okay to use violence to take stuff from the minority to give to a majority um, and at the same time in the school plan it, it, it says that they have to teach the opposite of that so I don't know how they can ever teach people how to think or, or help children learn how to think with all the giant contradictions um, that are just obvious but they're, they're, <laughs> I say they're obvious but they're not to the kids and um, I guess, you know, I, I guess they're not to the teachers. Otherwise, I don't really think the teachers are just there lying. I just think they've never put it together. That they're just preaching opposite things at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You don't really, you don't really understand it. I think until you're an adult and you have children yourself, and you realize that you just don't have a choice. It would be totally different if you actually had a choice. Like if if you are in an America or in England or something like that, where you can have an option to do what that there is the parent is responsible for the education for but, the children. That would be different, but it's not like that. But at least in, if if homeschooling is an option, at least there's some sort of competition between schools and non-school. So at least there is a bit of a, a market there. But when it is forced attendance to all schools, then there's no in, well, there's, there's not much incentive to to uh, keep the standard up and there's nothing to compare the results with. No, I'd really love to have um, uh, a freedom ba based uh, Bitcoin school that's voluntary to go to. I think that would be great. But I think that if we started one, I'm probably going <laughs> to work against it because it's totally against what their, their aim is. Well, I think you'd have to liberate Fora first and start a, a little nation there. Yeah, that's a beautiful island in the in the Baltic Sea. It's very nice. It's only six hundred people living there, I think. Yeah, so yeah, so um, I don't think it would. Uh, if you had, if someone had some money, I don't know if anyone bought loads of bitcoins when they were a, a penny each. Um, but if uh, if you had a load of money, you could uh, buy all the property there, take it over, and uh, get a load of ANCAPs to move in, yeah. have a vote because that's the, the way they like to decide things. Um, but it's not well, very the ANCAP-ish to have votes, is it? <laughs> no, but you just, you, yeah, but you know what the result's going to be because only ANCAP people are going to live there. And uh, and um, and that's how the U, I think it's the UN decides uh, that, that, that an area can self-determine or mm. create their own country. Oh well, yeah, I think that'd be quite a good, efficient way to creating a free a free state. But then you would probably get attacked from the, the military. There would be people with guns coming. 
Or or do you think no, no, that no, Putin because... would send some uh, submarines or something? Oh, what, to defend you? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't think there'd be a lot of people defending the idea of a free country. But I don't, they wouldn't they wouldn't attack you because it would be too obvious. They'd just do things like uh, um, make sure you had no access to any markets. So you wouldn't be able to get any deliveries of stuff and you'd, you'd basically have to live off the land. So that's yeah. why it'd be tricky. That's it's what... not very self-sufficient. <laughs> you'd have to go fishing every day and live on fi- and try to fish or something. Yeah, you'd have to go fishing, or you'd you know you'd have to be a smuggler. You know that's what you'd have to do yeah. to start with. But uh, it would change. I don't think there'd be. I don't think the Swedish Navy would be bl- blowing people out of the water. I mean, they don't. They don't blow up. Um, um, like North Africa migrants in the water who are, you know, obviously breaking the law by trying to get into Sweden. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you could just you could just get a boat from uh, four hour back to Sweden to go and buy stuff. And when the uh, when you get some hassle, just shout asylum, get some benefits, buy all your shopping, and go back. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure it wouldn't work that, that straightforward. No. But that seems to be, you know, there are some magic words you can use so you don't get into trouble. It seems. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know. I don't, I don't really think that the Florida is the best place in the world to okay, but it's the to only, start an island either. No, but it needs to be done somewhere to have a because it's not going to work when you've got more than half of the people who are either working for the government or who are on benefits. You know. No. So you, no, you're never going to vote. You're never going to. Democracy's never going to work. Um. No. Because the democracy is basically the tyranny of the majority. It is what the majority decides. So if you've got a hundred people and they have a vote on killing someone and then 51 people votes to kill that person, then they can do yes. that yeah. because they voted for it. This is basically, uh, this is a really drastic example, but it's basically what democracy is. And this is why people that think differently will never be able to be liberated with the education in a country that has set these rules for strict education like that. I, don't know, I think Fora would be more viable than Vatican City. Mm-hmm. Vatican City is completely landlocked and surrounded by Italy. And it yeah, but on Italy. It, Italians love the Pope. They do. No, whatever. If it doesn't matter, but four A, you've got sea access. Um, your um, you could go to, you know, basically you've got borders, like sea borders with quite a lot of different countries. Yeah, but yeah. people are just going to move to if they want to move somewhere. If they want to homeschool and they live in Sweden, they're actually thinking about moving somewhere. They're just going to go to Orland, aren't they? Because there they can get More benefits. quite generous benefits. Yeah. And they can speak Swedish and they don't have to go through the bother of creating their own country and stuff like that. That's what they do. But still, it's like, I, I still don't really understand. I've, I have been trying to understand for such a long time why, if if you're leaving Sweden because no, but, it's important with the education to do it your way, you go, you go th- to, then why do you go to yeah, you Orlando go to, all places? You go to Orland because people speak Swedish there, so obviously it's more comfortable to, even though you've left Sweden, to still be in a place where people speak Swedish. I don't think there's many other places in the world outside Sweden where people speak Swedish. No, there's not. Right. But so the, the thing is, if you do something so radical like taking care of your own education for your children, then you are still going to be a minority in a culture like that. You will always be a minority. Well, if you were, would for instance move to England or America or something, it's, it's still a minority. Not, yeah, no, but it's not really in that way. It's about three percent, I think, that homeschools in the U.S. And there's a lot of support. There's plenty of homeschool co-ops and communities and stuff like that. While in a place like oh, three, Orlando, they're a little okay, bit spread it's, out. And three percent is three percent is a minority. Yeah. yeah, but it's still a couple of million. Yeah. Well, yeah, but people don't speak Swedish in America, so I completely yeah. understand why people move to 
Orland. It just doesn't look that great for doesn't, me. But then again, really appeal, so. but then again, like you know, Swedish isn't my first or my only language. No. Um, and uh, not it's not really barely a second language. Yeah. I wish uh, Swedish people could see more possibilities than just moving to Orland just because they're already Swedish people there. Mm. They, because you can always, if you're, if you, if you uh, many enough, then you can create uh, another uh, area where you can move to and you can start a community learning center and things like that. Yeah, well, if you're Swedish and your main thing is to homeschool and to hang out with other Swedes, I don't know how many families there are homeschooling on Orland. How many is it? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure, but I think around 50. Right. So basically, you're there for a community of 50 families. And, and maybe you have some friends that are other, also from Orland and things like that. Maybe you have some other friends in Orland. I don't know how, I don't know how many friends you might have. And um, Still, uh, it's enough people um, to hang out with, really. It's enough, yeah, okay. But it's not loads of people, and you could easily create a community of that few people somewhere better. If you're just looking at Bali, there's well, about... Say easily. Was you it... couldn't easily. Physically easily you could, but actually arranging that yeah. is not so easy, especially with the uh, the access to government benefits that a lot of people seem to want who homeschool. Yeah. But I don't know, it's not really my cup of tea. No, not really. But if, for instance, in... Um... In Ubud in Bali, there's about, what is it, uh, 5,000 families or something like that living there. And there's many people that homeschool. And there's even a few Swedish people there. So a place like that, you already have a sense of community like that. And also if, if you move to like when Austin, you, you talking about? Ubud has got many people homeschooling, even Swedish families homeschooling there. And uh, in uh, uh, Utah. In the US, there's a couple of families, Swedish families homeschooling, and also in, if you can't in live Florida in... and Austin. You can create a community if just a couple of families move together. You can create right, because you can't, yeah. you can't live in the US unless you have a green card. No. So, you know, you might be perfectly able to support yourself and, um, you know, not be on benefits and whatnot. Uh, but that. that just that isn't enough to be allowed to live in America. Um, and well, same for same for Bali. I mean, you can go in and out and get your visa renewed, but they've just they've just changed the rules in Thailand, so you can't do that anymore. So they might do that in uh, Bali soon. Yeah, sure. But I mean, if you're happy to keep moving around, yeah, then you can be anywhere you want for like up to uh, sure. for a couple of months at least. Yeah, I think the best idea is to be just be in um, the former communist countries of Eastern Europe because they're still you in the Uni you European want. Union and they have very high living standard and they're quite free on these things. It's about the same laws here in Czech Republic as there is in Finland, for instance, with the schooling. So you can do homeschooling here too with uh, two checkups per year. Anyway, running out of time and the, basically the, the message in this podcast is that uh, just because we have democracy in Sweden, uh, it's not going to change. Homeschooling is never going to be allowed in Sweden because the majority is against it. And that's just not going to happen. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. It's not no? It's not because the majority is against it. It's because when you vote, you don't... You don't choose what you're voting for, or you're just voting to choose someone who may or may not do what they say they're going to do. You can't hold them to actually doing what they say they're going to do. And, you know, they don't even know which policy of theirs you were voting for no, them. But on. the majority so, have chosen that person and they get entrusted them. Yeah, but which, this okay, is what I which, mean. which of the parties in Sweden supports homeschooling? Uh, like unregulated homeschooling? I think there's no no parties that is inside of the government, right. uh, but I think Kristdemokraterna has got the most uh, sort of uh, family friendly policy, but it's not still not friendly enough. Okay, but if you're going to vote for them, how do you know? How do they know? I mean, they're Christian Democrats. So people might be voting for them because they're Christians. How do you know yeah. it's for homeschooling? Yeah, no, voting is. Uh, I think it's just um, an unethical, <laughs> and it's. 
way of using violence against other people through what the people that have voted for decides. Unless it's a chance to vote to get rid of a layer of government like Brexit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Anyway, that's enough for today. Um, I'm sure we'll have another podcast soon. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.